Hi, this is Craig Beck and welcome into this episode. Uh, today I want to talk about the coronavirus because, well, let's face it, it's the only thing anyone's talking about. But specifically, I want to talk about alcohol and the coronavirus because there's a lot of stories going around at the moment. There's a lot of people saying stuff and I want to talk about whether it's true or not. So specifically today, I want to talk about does alcohol protect you from the coronavirus? Because a lot of people are stating, especially on social media, that it's good to keep drinking at this time because alcohol kills viruses. And they're right, it's true. But does it compute? Is there logic to say that if you drink alcohol, it protects you from the coronavirus? I want to tell you in this episode. I also want to talk about mental health. Because as we know, for problem drinkers, mental health is a big trigger. A lot of people drink when they feel down, when they feel anxious. A lot of people incorrectly believe that alcohol helps with anxiety, and it doesn't. It creates anxiety, so it creates a loop. So, you know, if you're normally prone to depression and anxiety in normal times, then I understand that this time of year and what is happening around the world must be a huge, difficult trigger for you. So let's talk about that. I also want to talk about the distortion of reality because Look, make no bones about it. This is a very serious situation. It's, it's unprecedented. I can't remember anything in my lifetime that felt even vaguely similar to this. A lot of people are going to die. There's going to be a lot of tragedy because of this. But we mustn't fall in to the virtual reality that is being created by the rolling news services. There has never been a storm that didn't end. This will end. Things will be fine again that is guaranteed to happen. So we have to get out of this, this gloom, this, this perception that has been created that this is the end of the world. Let's talk about that. And finally, boosting your immune system. Because it doesn't matter whether you're in a high risk group or not. Generally, the best advice here is just to avoid getting the virus, isn't it? Even if you get mild symptoms, you're going to pass it on to other people who may have a more problematic experience with it. So the best thing to do is just not get it in the first place. Make sure that your immune system is firing on all cylinders and it can defeat it really quickly so that you don't have a long lingering illness where you infect lots of other people. So point number one, let's get to the, the heart of the mat here, here, because people are saying I'm drinking because it kills the virus. It's protecting me. And I've seen bar and pub owners making this claim as well. We're busy because people come here to protect themselves against the virus. I even had um, a guy email me the other day. He said, Craig, I was going to get started with your stop drinking course. But hey, coronavirus is probably going to kill me anyway, so I might as well just carry on drinking. <sighs> All right. Look, the truth is that the reason they use alcohol in hand gel is because it's very good at destroying microscopic life. It pulls all the moisture out of cells and implodes them. It's like thermonuclear war in a Petri dish, this stuff. So the reason they rub, you rub alcohol in your hands is because on contact it destroys life. Now, if you think that by adding a bit of cranberry juice to it, it's not doing the same thing to internal parts of your, your organs and your body, then you're misleading yourself. Drinking poison to kill a virus it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's, it's only looking at half the story. All right, yeah, in theory, you've killed the virus, but you've also done a whole heap of damage to yourself as well. Now, the truth is, if, you're, if your stomach was full of alcohol and the coronavirus landed in your stomach, it would die. And you might think, well, a victory for alcohol. But the truth is, it would die anyway because your stomach acid would kill it. Your stomach is not an environment where these viruses can live and grow. And actually, the coronavirus prefers the cooler parts of your body. So it prefers to live in your nasal cavity, in your sinuses, in your lungs, where the air and temperature is cooler. And it doesn't matter how much alcohol you drink, you're never gonna have sufficient in your body to be able to kill everything in these areas. Because the alcohol goes 
down into your stomach where it's processed by the liver and then excreted by the body. It's not a defense against the virus. It is not a justification to keep drinking. So let me make this super clear. Alcohol does not, alcohol consumption does not protect you against the coronavirus. If you've seen that story, it's bullshit. I'm sorry. Now, mental health. Look, my mental health is, is generally pretty good. Um, but even I, right now, I'm feeling worried, a bit depressed and uh, anxious because I live on a small island in the Mediterranean and most of the people I love and care about, my children, my parents, my brother, they live 2,000 miles away in the United Kingdom. And that's never been a problem before because I always knew that I was four hours away from them. If anything went wrong, if they needed me, I could be on a plane and with them in four hours. And the Cyprus government has effectively closed the airports here until May. And it means I'm trapped here and I can't be with and I can't help the people I love. And I, I will admit to you, it's making me feel really anxious and on edge and a little bit down. And I know you feel the same way about the specifics of your life as well. I know you feel like that. And so does the evil clown. You know, I talk about alcohol addiction, that you have to separate yourself from it. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not a broken or bad person because you problem drink. It's just that you've invited this little monster into your head that I call the evil clown. And he's on this mission to kill you. And he's always there whispering in your ear, suggesting why it's a good thing to have a drink. You've had a stressful day. The kids are playing up. Your boss is an asshole and so on. He's always there with a reason why alcohol is a good thing to add into your life at this point. And even if you've been sober for months or years and your little evil clown is really weak and pathetic and he's been starved of oxygen and food for many, many years, he's going to seize on this moment. In this moment, when you doubt, when you're afraid, when you're scared, he's going to summon all the energy he's got to just raise his voice and say, why don't you make this go away? Have a drink. It'll kill the virus. Have a drink and you can forget about all this terrible stuff going on. He will save his energy for when you are at your most vulnerable. And for a lot of people, this is now. Now, I understand if you have mental health issues, you need a solution. And that clown will suggest that it is a solution and it's not. People with anxiety issues tell me they drink because it helps with their anxiety. And the hard reality is it doesn't. Alcohol creates anxiety. So what you're doing by using alcohol to cope with anxiety is you're creating a loop. Now, I know people argue at this point. They say to me, but Craig, you're saying that. But my experience here is I feel anxious. I drink. I feel better. So what do you got to say about that? And it's true, but it's a bit like going to a loan shark with your debt problem. You have a debt problem. You go to a loan shark and Hey, presto, your situation feels better. If only that was the end of the story. Because now you've just made your debt problem infinitely bigger. So you've kind of fixed it in the short term at the expense of creating a much bigger problem in the long term. And that's the most important thing you've got to realize about this drug is there is always a price to pay. For whatever perceived benefit you are getting in the moment, there is a very heavy price to pay for that. You may have helped your anxiety in the short term, short term, but you have now set up a more severe anxiety episode in the future because the drug is in your system and it's going to use carrot and stick to manipulate you. The drug is going to manipulate you. Man can't talk today. The drug is going to use carrot and stick to manipulate you to use more of the drug. And the way it does this is by creating a mild sensation of anxiety. 
It's that jittery feeling you get that you vocalize as, oh, I could do with a drink. Now, if you've already got anxiety and you take a drug that creates anxiety, can you see the problem here? And when you're in that anxious state, because the evil clown is now energized, because you've been using the drug, he's gonna pop up again and say, we know the solution to anxiety, it's alcohol. And you go, yeah, it worked yesterday, so it'll work today. And you're creating a cyclone, a loop, that's gonna get tighter and tighter and quicker and quicker. This is what happens. So I encourage you not to turn to alcohol for your mental health issues. This is such a huge subject that I, I can't give you too much else to do in this video, but I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, go through the videos, do the online course. This is a great thing to do if you're self-isolating at the moment. Do something productive, make a positive impact in your life. Join the free quit drinking webinar today and find out more about it. At least do that. Go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com. Let's talk about the distortion of reality here because we're in danger of talking ourselves into a very, very bad situation. Look, the truth is there has never been a storm that didn't end. And while this situation is very serious, it's very bad, it's unprecedented, it will end. It will come to an end and life will return to normal. Things will be fine again. Things will get better. You have to remember that the coronavirus is getting rolling news coverage. And I've worked in media, I've run news teams. This is their perfect moment. This is like heaven on a plate for the news services. This is the best thing that's ever happened because nothing sells better than bad news. And this is the ultimate bad news story. Come watch the world ending live with us. It's the ultimate. I'm sorry, and I don't mean to offend my journalist friends, but journalists are wetting their pants about this story. They love it. Nothing is better than bad news. And this coronavirus has got a billion hours of news coverage around the world. You compare that to what AIDS got or Ebola or SARS or MERS, it's, it's fractional the amount of airtime that these other serious diseases and illnesses have got. And you know, we get headlines like death rates soaring death rates escalating, really dramatic statements. And what they're talking, is, talking about is 100 people died. And that's really serious, 100 people have died. But look, alcohol has killed around 8,500 people every day for decades, in fact, hundreds of years. Alcohol has killed more people in the last 10 years than coronavirus will ever kill. It's, it's a disproportion. What we're looking at is a distortion here. The other day I was in the local store and there was a guy in front of me and he had a face mask on. He had black rubber surgical gloves on and he walked up to the counter and he said, uh, 80 cigarettes and a bottle of vodka, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, I don't understand. Do you, do you care about your life or do you not care about your life? Do you want to die or don't you want to die? What, what, is the, what is going on in your head where you're buying 80 cigarettes and a bottle of vodka while wearing a face mask and rubber gloves? I mean, you see, it's, it's just because everyone is focused on this virus at the moment. It's all we can talk about. It's all we can think about. It, it's become much more significant than it really is in the grand scheme of things. Eight and a half thousand people every day die because of this evil, narcissistic, sociopathic drug that is still absolutely legal, still absolutely fine, is allowed to advertise on the TV, is allowed to sponsor the halftime show of the Super Bowl. No problem with it. 
governments around the world, no problem with it at all. And it's killing eight and a half thousand people every day and gets this much airtime. So let's keep a sense of perspective here. Let's keep ourselves safe and do what the government tells us to do. Follow the advice, follow the rules and look after each other and be kind to each other. But this will end. This will come to an end and everything will be fine. And I think it's really important that we keep reminding ourselves of that. And finally for today, I want to talk about boosting your immune system because one of the worst things you can do if you're trying to stay healthy and trying to keep your immune system functioning and firing on all cylinders is drink alcohol. Because one thing we know for sure is alcohol intake damages and dampens the immune system. So if you're serious about keeping yourself healthy, then I would advise you to do these things. And I'm not a doctor, I'm just telling you what I do. One, don't drink alcohol. Because if you drink alcohol, everything else you do to protect yourself and your loved ones is reduced infinitely. Vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, and eat well. It's as simple as that. Give your immune system every fighting chance. I should add in there, don't smoke as well, because smoking and alcohol are seriously um, damaging your immune system. And if you do them both together, it's not good. Don't drink alcohol, vitamin D, because something like 90% of the Western world is vitamin D deficient and it's really important for a healthy immune system. Vitamin C with zinc. And look after yourselves. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out the podcast. And if you are worried about your drinking and want to find out more about my online course, please go to the website right now and sign up for today's free quit drinking webinar. The web address is www.stopdrinkingexpert.com. Thank you.